Hello, everybody! Hello, and welcome to Mystery House. <laughs> I figure with Halloween coming up, and uh, the fact that I am a admitted Sierra fanboy, that it's time to start playing the old school. It's Mystery House. Now, with Mystery House, it's kind of like a mm, Agatha Christie and then they were none kind of a thing. This is also my first try at re pre recording a video and then so, sort of doing commentary over it, so nothing's really going to add up. I figure trying to type like this and commentate at the same time would just be too distracting and I couldn't do it. It's like trying to play a text adventure and have a conversation with somebody else at the same time. It's walking and chewing gum, you just can't do it. So here's all seven people, we're here to try and find some jewels and the door has now locked behind us and there's nothing we can do. One of these people is a dirty, filthy murderer. I just love how they kind of look like, I don't know, they look like elves to me. It, now this is just, it's exactly a text-based adventure just with little pictures drawn in. And you'll notice they're kind of slow to load in, that's because these are not saved images. The, the game is actually drawing these images as needed. So you tell the, you know, they, they tell, say, hey, you're in the kitchen now. And the computer's like, beep, boop, beep, I will draw kitchen as per parameters, beep, beep, beep. And it's like now it's drawing a sink, which looks kind of like a human being that I pulled a butter knife out of. And just, again, like any adventure game, you need every single thing that is not nailed down. So I got me some matches. I got a butter knife out of it. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a little weird as far as syntax in this game. Like, I'll say turn on something or whatever and it's like the game's like what 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 are you talking about like in a second i'm gonna be like i need to fill this picture i'm picking up which is in the fridge for some reason who puts an empty fridge in the, who puts an empty pitcher in the fridge to fill it with water and i'm trying like turn on faucet or open taps or something like that and i have to i have to do something like turn water and then I'm like, fill pitcher? No, I don't know how to do that. And then you say, get water. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. It's going a little bit fast because I still have to cut down this video down to my still 15 minute limitation, which is kind of bad. So a lot of these screens actually load a lot faster than you would think, because I am running this on an Apple II emulator. Now that this game is, I think, I think it's, I want to say it's public domain now. So. If you go to the Internet Archive, you can actually just play the original Apple II version, like, right there. Now, what I, I've been reading up on this game, and a couple interesting things came to mind, or came to light. It was designed to be hard. I mean, not hard because there are difficult puzzles. No, no, no. It's hard because that was a selling point. They made this game purposefully extremely obtuse and even said right on the back of the box it's like this game is going to take you weeks nay months to beat and the reason for that is because you can't really the look command doesn't work like if you're in a room and you say look around it's like oh there's a desk and a door and then there's a picture over there which suddenly appears it doesn't work and that really comes back to bite you in a big way near the ending and I'll point it out when it happens but the interesting thing is it's all inventory puzzles. So I just used the butter knife to on the painting, and you don't know why, and it's like, no, now it's loose. It's like, well, what did I do? It's like, did I, did I run it along the frame to cut the picture out of the frame, or did I jimmy the, the butter knife behind it and like pull it off the wall? I don't think the butter knife would be able to do that. Anyway, well, there's a button and blah, 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 blah. So this is actually the way to the jewels and your final, and I think this is where we find our first body. Did we find a body before? Anyway, yeah, there he is. X is for eyes and the whole works. I just love how, I love how kitty the artwork is. It's wonderful. And it says there's algae on the walls. It's like the only time it actually gave you the details. Like, oh, there, there's algae on the walls. And I was like, I must be able to do something with that. So I'm just like, all right, well, let's just uh, wipe the algae off, which is what you're supposed to do. But I have nothing to wipe it with. That was my own fault. And if you look at the body, he's actually, it looks like he's holding a sparkler, like he died on the 4th of July, but that is actually a daisy, which is, I guess, supposed to be a hint on, like, a whodunit, because one of the girls' names is Daisy, and later you find a blonde hair on someone. At the very beginning, it gives you that dossier of people, like, here's the chef, and he's a brunette, and here's the doctor, and he's got red hair, and then here's Daisy, and she's also a chef, and she's got blonde hair, and you're like, uh-huh. And one of them stabs, so I guess it just kind of assumes she carries her chef's knife with her at all times. 
So here's another kind of a weird puzzle. So you climb up this large tree and somehow there's a telescope at the top of it. Oh, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Here's the bullshit part. So you're just wandering around the forest and you do it forever and you look, it's like there's nothing. It's like there's, no, there's just trees. But if you click open door while you're in one specific area, it says the kitchen door is open, which means you are next to the house. And you can't know that. There's no way to know that, that I have been able to find nor discern. So you could be wandering around the, the forest forever and ever and ever and not knowing what to do. So you just go to every single one. It's like open door for the least of the love of God. It's like, there's no door here. Please open door over here. And it's like, and then, then you find that works. And then you say, okay, well, I open the door. Which way do I go? It's like, where's the door? So you like, go east, go west, go, go north, go south. And that, all that does is take you away from the screen you want to be. So we have to like, I think I have to write in like go indoor or you for up or something. And that brings you in. It's really weird and thus sort of begins the the cycle of madness which led to Sierra's classic and now I think trademarked moon logic and we all have mystery house to blame for that there's also a bunch of notes sitting around on the floor which you can read and I, I cut out a lot of it because you have to get it then you have to look at it and then you have to drop it so here's a note from uh, the killer who we know to be Daisy now because the game pretty much gave it away but there's a funny little disclaimer at the beginning, which is like, if you have a note or you have several notes, if you read a note to make sure you drop it because the computer is not smart enough to know that if you pick up several notes, it's, oh, ooh, missed that one. See, oh, that's like the one bit of action in the game. I think normally that knife is just already there and it's like got those little, little beep, 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 little lines like it was thrown. But in the Apple IIe version, because it's all drawn and not just a picture, like some of the um, emulated or quote-unquote remastered versions, which are in black and white, by the way, which don't have the cool green and purple pseudo-3D effect. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, and it kind of draws in later, so it looks like it's an action shot, so you can kind of hear... And, of course, it hit a mattress, so it wouldn't go... And there it is. And you get the dagger, and there's absolutely no use for it. You don't even get the dagger. Now here, you know, here, there it goes. There's the, the trap door that just appeared there in the ceiling, which does not appear unless you went up and saw that telescope, which was for some reason sitting up in a tree. I don't know. This game has, again, a lot of leaps of logic, but I, my, my theory is this, is because if you were playing this as a classic text adventure game, every time you typed in look or do this or go here, it would give you like this paragraph long synopsis of what you're seeing like in Zork there's like you're standing in front of a white house with uh, a picket fence and a there's a mailbox here so he's like look in mailbox and then it goes in there in this game because there are images and the images take up a ridiculous amount of space remember these things are back in like the old what like five and a five and a quarter inch floppies way back and which those things held like what 512 bytes or something like that I can't even remember but it used one. But there's 70 drawings, 70 some odd drawings in here, and they take up all the room. So they don't have any room, I'm guessing, for any kind of contextual text. Like, look at this. It was like even at the very end when you're confronting the killer, there's someone standing in the room with a knife, and you're like, look, person, and they're just like, I don't see anything special about it. What are you talking about? It's those kind of things which kind of ruin the game, as it were. But again, this is 1980. This is the very first game of its kind. And there it is. Now that I went upstairs and I found the towel, which, by the way, if you go to the bathroom and you type look, it doesn't tell you that there's a towel there. It might as well just be background. It's like, what is this rectangle on the wall? And then it's like, all right, well, I'll take the towel. I think even if you know the towel is there, you can still get get the towel. But most likely, if you type in look towel, yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing you do. So now that I have the jewels, I got, I pried out the loose brick and I wiped off the algae and I got the jewels and it's like, hey, everything's great. But now that I have the jewels, I don't think you'll really have any kind of compulsion to go out and actually track down the killer. If you want to just leave the house, I think you can. And there's not a point system, so if you find the murderer and confront them, it's like it doesn't really do anything. I mean, it's the fact that you can, which is cool. But I can only imagine what it must have been like back in 1980 when all people were playing were text adventure games. And these text adventure games to put it in perspective, I mean, these, they, they cost like five, ten, fifteen dollars sometimes if they were being distributed. If they weren't just made as a labor of love. Mystery House, I looked up, cost twenty four dollars and ninety five cents back in nineteen eighty, which, with inflation, let me check my stats here, comes up to be 
Let's see, it's 200% uh, inflation, which leads to $75. Mystery House cost $75 equivalent back in 1980. Anyway, so now that I have the key, we can open up the chest. And we have a lot of weapons, like we have a knife, we have a butter knife, we have a, like a, a, a huge dagger of some sort. But inside the trunk, as soon as the game decides to draw it, there you go, is a gun. Even though it looks like a little mini, it looks like a double-barreled sawed-off shotgun. It looks amazing. But now that we have the gun, I, I actually never tried to confront the killer with anything but the gun, so I'm not sure what happens. It's most likely a game over. It's like, oh, this person is better with a knife than you are. So nothing you can do about it. So then you have to go through the the tedious moments of you know opening the trap door, and there she is. This is supposed to be our killer. There it is, girl in the tower. She's reaching out. She's gonna stab me with the banana. And so you, so you do look, nothing special. And it's like, look, girl, like nothing. It's like you're just in the tower. And you say, shoot, girl, and then you're dead. And the only way you could tell, there we go, before. And after, there it is, there's the X's and the eyes. Still standing up in exactly the same spot. Knife, banana still gleaming. And then you can pick up what I guess is her note. Just like, it's in the basement. Why she would write that for everybody else to find, I don't know, but I already know. So Daisy, you were our murderer. Why did you do it? Why would you do it? But we never find out. No one has a motive. This is 1980, there are no motives here. This, there's actually, well, I guess it is kind of a rudimentary plot. You enter a house, you're locked inside of it. You're here to find the jewels with a bunch of other, you know, jewel findy type of people. I'm not sure. Do we get invited here? Is it kind of like Seventh Guest? Do you think Seventh Guest got its ideas from Mystery House? How weird would that be? Anyways, all you gotta do is step down off the porch and congratulations, you have beaten Adventure and you are declared a Guru Wizard. There's got to be a twist. That's me. He's like, would you like to play again? How hard can I press the letter N? I was a little bit confused when I, I played a, um, I guess kind of a remake of this game or sort of a, a uh, homage to it. But it was all in black and white and it had like that same weird spelling error and there was a time that you looked at a, at a painting and it's like, well, thanks for noticing, but it's spelled a T-H-A-N-X, you know, because it's the 80s and every, X's are awesome, whatever. So I thought it was like a bad mistranslation of the original game. So I tracked down the original, which is this, and yeah, it's in there. It's like, congratulations, you have beaten adventure. Like it's some sort of weird misspelling or pigeon English from a, from a Japanese Nintendo game or something like that. That was really poorly localized. Oh, anyway, I realized I did not talk about anything I was doing the entire time, but that, ladies and gentlemen, was Mystery House, the very first graphic adventure game, the very first Sierra game before Sierra even became a thing. They actually made this game out of their own homes and they give their current address, Roberta and Ken Williams, at uh, this address here in Mudge Ranch Road. And if you look it up online, you can actually find a Zillow listing for it. So you can kind of take a, a weird kind of creepy voyeuristic look into the lives of 1980s Ken and Roberta Williams. So yeah, you could take a little virtual tour of their house and actually see where Mystery House and those kind of games were conceptualized and even made and mailed out. Of course, in this kind of climate, you can't give out your personal email. You have to have a P.O. box, otherwise, problems. And what's interesting is we kind of can track down where the Sierra offices were, and it's literally seven miles up the road from their house, which was great. So. Hey, they didn't even have that big of a commute when the Sierra Online big building was actually in use. Anyway, that's Mystery House, guys. I'm actually hoping I want to do some more of these, um, what they call the high-res adventures. One of them is called, uh, I think, Adventures in Serenia or something like that, which is the literal precursor to the King's Quest series. Because, hey, it's like Serenia, and that was the name of the town in King's Quest V. So that's uh, it's a thing that could happen. Anyway... Thanks for joining me, guys, and as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night. Achaka, I'm really more trouble than I'm worth. I'm so sorry. He's like, whatever. I'll just pencil in mummy's boy. Is that a plus? Come the whistles, visit me. You only need one eye to see. One for you and one for me. Mm -hmm.